Right, around two thirds of the British public are unhappy with the way the government handles immigration, given that it's at its highest level since uh, before the Brexit vote. We're going to talk to the human rights lawyer, David Hay, who's, no, who's a great friend of this programme. David, um, you're probably one of those who uh, is the third who's happy, because um, while there's uh, hundreds of thousands of people pouring in here, that's very good for your bank balance. <laughs> Good, good, good morning to both of you. I think I think you know the, the survey is, is is probably a good reflection of, um, of how the, the the country is thinking. I don't think you know if you if you want to say there's two sides of the story that you know people that were welcome um, uh, asylum seekers and people that don't or whoever it may be, are, no, no one's really happy. The policy of the government, even though Rishi Sunak says it's working in terms of stop the boats, clearly isn't. Um, and at the same time, you know, from a human rights perspective, I'm seeing genuine asylum seekers suffering and being vilified and so neither neither side if, as, as it were if, the, if it is a side issue is, is, is winning so I can I, I fully agree with the report it seems a very sensible one how many how many non-genuine asylum seekers David do you see tell us honestly I mean I, I, there, you know there are a considerable number and you know I've mentioned before back back when I was a, a, a training solicitor you know even then there were immigration scams and you would see them time and time again so you know and that's quite a while ago so you see you do see them a lot there is a, a, a you know a considerable commercial benefit for people coming to this country so people will take that risk so there are many and there's a growing nefarious industry around enabling those people to come in illegally um, and and this is just you know the the, the numbers are literally just a, an example of that, I think. And um, one thing that does concern me, though, is if the, the Rishi Sunak genuinely believes, as is, is the comments put out um, with, with this information, that he is um, succeeding in his stop the boats policy, then we need to start looking at his grasp on reality. How do the genuine asylum seekers that you meet, David, feel about those who are gaming the system to come over here and make money sometimes through nefarious means? I think gen genuine asylum seekers are suffering because, you know, wherever you go or up and down the country because of the non-genuine asylum seekers that aren't coming in here and, and abusing the system, anyone that is an asylum seeker now is, is wrongly tagged, um, you, you know, that they are ungenuine and that they are the people that, uh, you know, that we can blame various ills in the country on. And they are suffering. They are suffering abuse um, as well as changes in the law that will or should do in, in terms of deter the non-genuine asylum seekers, it's also harming them as well. So they are suffering out of the policies as well, greatly. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a badge of dishonour now to have the tag asylum seeker and one that can get you physically harmed. So it's, it's a serious issue. But do you ever hear those genuine asylum seekers express their anger at those who are gaming the system? Yes, absolutely, because they are bringing a bad name to the genuine people. So, you know, if, if you have in, in your local town up and down the country, you have a, a hotel or a house that's housing asylum seekers, you don't distinguish between the genuine ones and the non-genuine ones. Everyone is getting tagged with the bad label, and that's harming the genuine people. And so, yes, absolutely, they have, you know, many, many people have said to me that, that, that you know, they are vilified because of the non-genuine asylum seekers. And what's the percentage, David? You've been very honest here and admit you see a lot of people who aren't genuine. What is the percentage who's genuine in your view and those who are, as Bev would call it, gaming the system? I mean, of the ones that I've seen, and that's the one that I've seen, so it's not, you know, you can't be, it's not a reflection of the, the nationality. And the ones that, you, you know, I only help people that I think are genuine. Um, but the ones that do come through, I would say, and, and again, in my experience, about 20% genuine. Only 20%? Correct. So 80%. And, but that's in my experience. Well, so that's you... probably typical. So 80% are lying. Yeah, correct. Com I would say commercial, commercial interest they're coming in. They're not coming, trying to come here because that's they're a... suffering. Um, David, that's a shocking figure. Horror. That's a shocking it's, it is. Figure. I agree. It's an absolute shocking figure. Were those people, so the 80% who are coming here because they want to improve their quality of life, they're not, they're not escaping murderous intent by a particular political regime. Those people who are coming here to make a better life, why aren't they taking any of the legal routes to get here, David? Why aren't they just applying to be, because they just wouldn't qualify on our points-based system, I presume you're going to say. 
Absolutely. I mean, the, the, in, the, in the general, they're, say, for instance, unskilled, unskilled workers with no real connections here. So there is no there is no genuine kind of legal route that they could come here on. Mm. Um, the route that they can come here on is coming across the channel, which would cost them a few thousand pounds. So it's a, you know, of course, it's risk to their life. But if you look at it from their perspective in terms of improving their life, um, uh, it's a risk that, as we can see, thousands and thousands and thousands uh, are perfectly happy to take. Um, but like I said earlier on, you know, I mean, I help, you, you know, I help genuine people, mostly from the, the, the Middle East, that are really suffering um, in, in those parts of the world, particularly in the Gulf states, that, that are genuinely have their, their lives and, uh, at risk. Um, and the, the significant number of people that are coming um, that are not genuine are, are harming them. Oh, David, Fascinating. And thank you for being so As frank, always. David. David Hay, the human rights lawyer down there in Cornwall. Well, that is a staggering figure, but I'm not surprised by it. And I think it's great that he admitted it. Yeah. Because if it's 80% for him, it's going to be 80% everywhere. Likely. If not higher. You pro possibly, probably, who knows? Because I would look... you, see the, you see the boats coming across the channel. What do you see? 99% young men in their 30s or younger. You see, I think that, but that's because the journey is dangerous. Because so, they're economic so to, but, but, but Yes, but also if you have to cross several countries, you try, you know, to, try to get your kids mm. to walk across the park isn't easy. You can't often get kids, and then have women, families here. going across. So, so that's why it's the men, because they get here yeah. and then they want to make money. And then they will bring over their families Most sometimes. Single. And sometimes they are legally, yeah. ha they have a right to do that. But that shock, that figure of 80% of people and just gaming the system. And we are already full up.